Welcome to part 11 of this series on Excel VBA user forms. This fairly short video is going to talk about how to use checkboxes in your forms. So as ever we'll start by showing you how to draw and format the control and then how to reference its value in your code. By default a checkbox can only return true or false but we'll also show you how to create a triple state checkbox which can return null values and as we're doing that we'll show you how you can test for nulls in your code. Towards the end of the video we'll show you how you can use a checkbox to control other objects on the form by enabling and disabling another checkbox based on the value you select in the first. So let's get started. So here's a simple example we're going to create in this video. I've added a couple of extra checkboxes to my form which allow the user to state whether they've seen a film and if they've seen it whether it was any good. So there's a couple of things going on here. Um, I've set the checkboxes up so they're triple state which means that they can hold a true, false or a null value. So currently if they're null you can see they're sort of greyed out in the background. I can't select anything for the any good checkbox because I haven't chosen whether or not I've seen the film yet. And if I haven't chosen anything for that checkbox when I try to add the film to the list, I've got a bit of validation code running which highlights that I haven't selected anything. As soon as I select something from the checkbox, if I have seen the film, then I'm allowed to select whether it was any good or not. And if I do that and then click the add to list button, I find that the data gets added to the list and it passes in the values true and false into the worksheet. I haven't shown it but I've also got a bit of extra code stored behind the any good checkbox so that if I have a null value that sets the other value of the cell to unknown rather than true or false. So that's the example we're going to create in this video. Let's get stuck in. Let's start by drawing just one of the two checkboxes and then change some of its basic properties. So you'll find the checkbox tool the fairly obvious icon in the toolbox. So just as with any other control you can click on the tool and then click somewhere on the form to draw it. I'm going to change its name so it's got a slightly more sensible one. So I'm going to call this one Film Scene. And then I'm going to change its caption so that that says something like Seen It, asking a, a question of the user. I'd also like to change the alignment of the text so that the text appears on the left and the checkbox appears on the right, just to keep it consistent with all the other controls I've drawn in this frame. So there's an alignment property there that I can change from right to left. Just change the width of that ever so slightly. And those are the basic properties of the checkbox set up. You can reference the value of a checkbox in a fairly obvious way in your code. So let's go to the click event of the add to list button and find the add data to list procedure and view its definition. And we're going to add in an extra line of code that transfers the value of the checkbox into the spreadsheet. So we're going to have another line which says active cell dot offset 0, 0,7 this time. And the value of that is going to be equal to film scene dot value. Simple as that. To give this one a quick test, then we can head back into Excel and then show the form on screen and we should find that we can enter, I don't really care about exactly uh, what details I add in at this point, just to make sure they're, they're valid um, numbers and dates and so on, just make sure I've filled in all the things I need to fill in. Um, and then if I check the checkbox um, by clicking on it, or once the control's active, I can use the space bar to check and uncheck the checkbox. So if I check it and click the add to this button, um, it'll add the value true to that column. You'll notice that when the form first appears on screen, the checkbox has got a default value of false or unchecked. I can change that if I want to just by simply changing the value property in the form's design view. So if I close the form down, head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then select the checkbox, I can scroll down through the properties window, find the value property and change that from false to true. So you can already see that changes in the design view. If I then run the form, I'll just test this out from the Visual Basic Editor this time, I'll find that the checkbox is checked by default. One small problem with only allowing true or false values for a checkbox is that there's no real way to tell whether the user's interacted with this control or not. Legitimately the user could answer either yes or no to the seen it question, but we've no way of knowing whether they've left that checkbox checked deliberately, or whether they missed out the question, or whether they just didn't even notice it. With lots of the other controls on a form, there's an easy way to test whether they've got an empty value, and in fact we've added lots of validation code in previous videos in this series that make sure that the user has actually selected something or typed something into a check to a text box, for instance. If we want to be able to do the same thing with a checkbox, we're going to have to change one of, a, one of its other properties. So to do that, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and then select the checkbox, and now we're going to change a property called triple state. So the triple state property is set to false by default. We're going to change that so that it's set to true. And now the checkbox can have one of three different values. The third value that a checkbox can hold when its triple state property is set to true is the value null. 
and I'd like to assign a default value of null to this checkbox when the form first loads. We can do this in code using maybe the forms initialize event, but it's much simpler to do just by deleting whatever value is stored in the value property. So if I select the, the word true and just backspace that and hit enter, the checkbox has now got a null value as its default. You can see it's sort of pale grey at this point in the background. If I run the form, it's probably slightly clearer when the form is running. So what this lets us do now is check whether the value of the checkbox is null, and if so, we know that the user hasn't interacted with it before we add an item to the list. So we can close down the form, and then we can add a bit more code to our validation criteria. So let's double click the Add to List button, and we're going to go to the Everything Filled In function, and right down at the bottom there, we're going to add in another if statement that checks if the checkbox is null. So this is a fairly simple if statement. All we're going to do is check if is null, film scene dot value, then add in my end if statement just so that I don't forget later on. And there are two things we're going to do. We're going to make the result of the everything filled in function equal to false because not everything has been filled in anymore. And we're also going to make the back color of the film scene checkbox equal to good old RGB pink, the same color we've been using for all of our other validation. So just to give that a quick test, if I switch back into Excel and then show the form on screen and try checking or clicking the button without having filled in or checked an option, it'll go pink. If I close the form down, show the form again, if I have chosen an option, either true or false, it doesn't really matter, true or false, if I click add to list, it won't turn pink. What we could also do with doing is making sure that when the checkbox has change its background colour to pink, making sure that when we do select a value that it reverts back to its original colour. So let's close the form down and then head back to the Visual Basic Editor and deal with that. I think the simplest thing to do here is use the change event of the checkbox. So to access that let's double click on the checkbox tool and then we'll generate the click event handler by default. I'd like to use the change event instead, so I'm going to select the change event from the top right drop down list. Then we can delete the click event handler, we don't need that. So the change event is triggered every single time the value of the checkbox changes. But because the checkbox can only be pink if it was already null, the very next value that you can select from the checkbox is true. So the sequence is null, true, false, null, true, false, and so on. So it goes around in that cycle. So if it's already null, the next option can only possibly be true. So we can fairly easily just say film scene dot back color equals RGB white. Now technically that will be changing every single time the value of the checkbox changes, but there's no real need to test if it's not null, because the, the next available value that it could be changed to after it was null was true anyway. So having done all that, we can switch back into Excel, show the form on screen, add to list, it goes pink, choose an option, it goes back to being white, and it will continue being white until I try to add it to the list with a null value again, at which point I can click the checkbox and it will clear its colour back to white. So let's add in the other checkbox that lets the user say whether the film was any good or not. I'm just going to reduce the height of the existing checkbox just to make it a bit, give myself a bit more space, and then I'm going to draw another checkbox just below it. And again, I'm going to change its name first of all, so that it's going to be called um, Film Good. And then change its caption so that it says something like Any Good, asking a question. I'll change its alignment so that the text appears on the left as, as opposed to the right. Just change its width so it's about the same width as the other checkbox. And again, change its height so it's a little bit less tall. Just a little bit of reorganizing there, making sure it looks, I can see all the text just about. So I should spend lots more time doing this in the real world to make it look nice, but um, we've spent plenty of time doing that in previous videos. Okay, so that'll do. Um, what we're going to do now is set the triple state property of that checkbox so that it is set to true. I want to, uh, to allow um, three values in this checkbox as well, and I want its default value to be null in the same way that the, uh, the default value of the scene checkbox is null as well. So to do that, just delete whatever value is stored in the value property. Okay, so that's the basics of that checkbox setup. Okay, the next thing I want to do is control when this second checkbox can be selected. If I just run the form from the VBE, at this point, without even say saying whether or not I've seen the film, I can choose whether the film was any good, and I don't want that to be the case. I only want to be allowed to select an option for the any good checkbox if I've said that I've seen the film. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the design view of the form and selecting that second checkbox again, I'm first of all going to set its enabled property to false, so that when the form first loads, I won't be able to select anything in that checkbox at all. Just to give that one a quick run, I'll see that I can't check or uncheck it. 
what I need to do now is re-enable that checkbox when the value of the first checkbox is set to true. So to do that, we're going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'm going to add some more code to the change event of the original checkbox. So I can double click on that to get back to the VBE and see the change event of that first checkbox. So we need to check if the value of the film scene checkbox is true. So we can write an if statement to do that. We say if film scene dot value. And when you're writing, when you're testing um, Boolean values, true or false, is there's a couple of different ways of writing the tests. You can legitimately say if film scene dot value equals true, then do something, which is absolutely fine, and a lot of people do that. When you're testing for true falses, the equals true part isn't actually necessary. If I want to test if that is equal to true, I can simply say if film scene dot value. If I was testing for, for whether it was equal to false, I could say, again, um, equals false, but um, slightly shorter and more succinct is to say if not film scene dot value. So um, I'm going to continue with this approach. It's slightly shorter and easy to type in, and as we've seen from previous videos, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to coding. So um, if film scene dot value is the same as saying if film scene dot value equals true. I'll add in my end if statement. And if that happens to be the case, what I would like to do is say that the film good dot enabled property is equal to true. Now here I don't have a choice about saying equals true. I'm trying to change the value of the property, not test what its value is. So to assign a value to that property, I have to make it equal to something else. Um, if we change it and the value of the film scene checkbox isn't true, then we want the film good checkbox to be disabled again. So I'm going to say film good dot enabled equals false. One other thing I'd like to do as well is if I've already selected a value for the film good checkbox and then I go back around and and choose null for the film scene checkbox or false for the film scene checkbox as in I haven't seen it I don't want the original value of the film good checkbox to be stored I want to set that back to a value of null so I'm going to say film good dot value equals null So let's give the system a little test. If we switch back into Excel and then show the form on screen, so I shouldn't be able to select anything from the any good checkbox to begin with. If I check the seen it checkbox, I should now be allowed to set an option from any good, so I could choose yes or no. If I uncheck the seen it checkbox, the any good checkbox should be re-disabled. Is that a word? Well, it is now re-disabled. Um, so the any, check, uh, any good checkbox now can't have anything selected. And hopefully you notice as well that it went back to a value of null. So the next time I choose that I, I have seen a film, it will still retain null. So then I'm, I'm forced to choose a value from this from this option again. So there we go. There's the uh, enabling and disabling of one checkbox based on another. This doesn't just have to be based on, on multiple checkboxes, by the way. You can use checkboxes to control um, any other object on the form. So you can enable and disable any number of controls based on the click of a checkbox. The last step then is to transfer the value of this second checkbox into the spreadsheet as well. We want to make sure, because this checkbox can legitimately be null, we want to make sure that we don't just pass a null value into the worksheet. I want to translate any nulls into the word unknown. So let's close down the form and then we'll head back to the Visual Basic Editor and we'll add some more code to the Add to List click event with the, uh, the Add Data to List procedure. So let's switch down into there and we're going to add another line of code in just after the last one we added. So we're going to offset eight columns across this time, so a quick copy and paste just to cheat and change the number seven to the number eight and then I'll write this across two different lines just to make sure I've got enough space to write the whole thing out. I'm going to use the if function um, which is an alternative for writing if statements so it's like an inline if which is perfect for situations like this. The expression the condition I'm testing for is much like the uh, the if worksheet function if you like. So um, the expression I'm testing for is null film good dot value and if that happens to be true, the result that I want to return is the phrase unknown. If the film good value was not null, then I want to return the value of the film good checkbox. So just film good dot value. Close the parentheses and then that's that done. So what we should find now is if I switch back into Excel and launch the form and type in any old random text for the title, any old random number for the gross, choose a certificate and um, check a couple of boxes. Make sure that I have checked 
the box, but I might not have seen the film, so I could legitimately leave any good as null, and then if I choose add to list, then I should find the word unknown rather than the value false. So um, that's just a quick summary of how to use checkboxes on Excel VBA forms. It wasn't a particularly complex video, but then checkboxes themselves aren't particularly complex. Hope you enjoyed that one. Join us for the next one, which will probably be about toggle buttons. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.